Hey, how's it going you goons? Today we're going to be playing some games with Nag Quag. And this is a build I've been working on for quite a while. It initially started out as a build to try and uh, checkmate my opponent by putting a bunch of damage in play with Muse and Spell Tags. And then eventually use Espion Deoxys or Buzzmosas with Beast Game to take knockouts. But I eventually realized I need to be able to do, I need to be doing a little bit more damage than that. So I've added in uh, wishy washies with the high HP of the 180, hitting for the 130. Sometimes get shuffled back in the deck, which is sometimes good, sometimes annoying because it takes our energy out of play. But uh, we can always get our energy back in the discard pile with the Jet Geyser. I have the Baby Blucephalon in here with the Fireworks Bond Bomb to help us set up um, win conditions through Espion Deoxys as well as Beast Game. Um, and then, yeah, that is. That is the deck. I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. It's been a ton of fun. Not the most competitive deck, but fun nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get into some games. All right, we are getting into one here. Professor Elms from our opponent with the Muse start. I have no idea what to expect. I guess we're going to have to find out together as to what the heck our opponent has going on here. Elms, Grass deck box. Okay, it is Lost March. All right, this is a pretty good... Or should be a pretty good matchup for us. We got a lot of spreading potential. Um, and yeah, we got a lot of spreading potential. So this matchup should be pretty good for us. There's that Nuzzly Gathering to combo with uh, Communications, I guess, and the Lost Blender. Yeah, so it should be pretty good. We can't use, unfortunately can't use uh, Sauna Blast to spread. But we have Espioxus as well as the Baby Blitzephalon. As long as we can find one of our rainbows or beast energy to combo with that on the three prize turn um i could even spit poison this turn one if i wanted to i definitely don't want to uh jet geyser here um i don't want the active to move unless they move it this they got double escape board so they'll probably go escape board mew and then escape board to the bench so now i actually might just jet geyser although i do kind of want to move the poipal to present potentially something uh better to have in the active so i think i would actually go with uh just putting the water on our active here and then trying to treat it into something. But I don't really want to give up a Poipal on turn one. Poipal is pretty cool to have around later in the game. Another Elm from our opponent. So it looks like they might have a pretty slow start, pretty, pretty slow go of it here early on. All right, our draw is an Ultra Space. That's pretty cool. I'm going to attach active Lily for five. Um, I'm going to start with a treasure here. We did find the, what's it called for a, what's it called? Uh, the rainbow for the... Um, Blocephalon at some point. There's the baby Blocephalon. I could actually go. I doubt they play custom catchers, so I could go grab baby Blocephalon and just attach the rainbow to him right now to plan for that turn coming up. But maybe that's a little bit aggressive. Um, I kind of I think I'm gonna retreat into the Volcanion this next turn. Um, let's go ahead and just grab a Poipole actually. I'm gonna retreat to the Volcanion. Uh, he is weak to lightning, so he shouldn't die next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and retreat. And then pass. We'll attach the rainbow next turn. Hopefully the ultra space sticks around for another turn. Yeah, it's unlikely that they one-shot our Volcanion. And we don't have a Quag on this turn two, so we can't actually attack turn two. So we pretty much just have to wait anyways for a turn or two before we attack ever. Um, so that's fine. We can go ahead and take our time. Chill out. Um, hopefully find some waters to jet geyser away. There's a shrine, unfortunately, to bump our ultra space. We definitely would like to have seen our ultra space stick in play for a little while. But, oh well, that's fine. That's a gathering once again. Get the Amalga and repeat. They can utilize that to con continuously use communication. Or there's an Erica, so they're definitely not going to have a super ridiculously strong turn this turn. Um, but yeah, they can use com communication Yeah, by getting them back. Or eventually they can just Lost Blender the Amalgas away if they want to get more Pokemon into the Lost Zone. There's a Skip Loom and a second Jump Bluff here. They'll have four in the discard pile, which means they're hitting for 80, which makes it pretty much impossible. They would have to go Lost Blender into discard two Pokemon, Lost Blender. But we know one of their hand, the cards in their hand is an escape board, so it's pretty much, I think it is actually just impossible for them to knock out the Volcano this turn, which is more than okay with me. I was buying a turn, when I, when I started as kind of slow like this, I was buying a turn from our opponent doing nothing is perfect. That's perfect for us, so. Happy with how this one is going so far. We should find a Wooper on this next turn, and then a What's It Called on the turn of following. There's a Great Catcher. That's not going to be super useful. Go ahead, throw that Rainbow in play. And Cynthia. There's the Wooper. And I will Jet Geyser here. I think it's more important to get the water in the discard pile than play around our opponent's What's It Called. Play around our opponent getting a Jirachi usage for the turn. But they went into the Mew, which is interesting. 
Um, go ahead and throw the U-turn board on our Volcanion and then pass to our opponent. A lot of stuff we can get out of our hand on the next turn as well. We have found no evolutions yet, which is getting a little bit scary, but we should be, we just need to find a Quagsire and a, what's it called on the next turn? A Quagsire and a Naganadel. Um, ideally a couple Naganadels actually. Ideally, yeah, I want like two or three Naganadels next turn. Um, and then ideally I'm gonna attack with Mew next turn actually and just put some damage in play with Mew's ability, just use Psy Power somewhere, set up some prizes for this guy, which we I'm, I am gonna put in play as well. I'll put the Cephalon in play as well on this next turn. There's that Lost Blender, and yeah, Lost March coming in for a cool 120 damage. Still not hitting very hard, but hitting more than more than hard enough to actually deal with our Pokemon we have set up. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and send up Poipul. We'll use her in board. I'll bench we'll Cephalon, attach to him. I see that great catcher. Once again, not what we want to see. Great Catcher does absolutely nothing for us. And Cynthia, three, four, five, six. We found the Naganadels. Or I could actually use. Oh, I can't attack with what's it called anymore. All right, so we are gonna have to give up a Poipul here as we set up further. Uh, but I'm getting to the point where it's getting a little bit dangerous, and I have to come up with some kind of game plan here eventually. Go ahead and grab two Naganadels. Get the charging ups going at the very least. We could look for the Buzzmosa play eventually instead, as we have built up quite a bit of energy at this point. Um, so we could go with the Mew. We need to draw two prizes outside of the Buzzmosa uh, knockout though. But what we could do is we could look to go knock out two things and then Buzzmosa for six prizes with the beast energy using beast game at the end of the game. So I think that is what I'm gonna go for here. So I'm gonna plan to go Mew, use Mew next turn if I can hopefully find Mew. Hopefully I can find Mew. And we're going to go Mew. Put like a ping damage here, a ping damage here, a ping damage somewhere else. And then we use uh, Fireworks Bomb, knock out two things. And then we have like two or three turns to set up for the Beast Game play. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. And then set up Beast Game, one shot whatever their active is. Because it's going to be a Lost Marcher, which means it's going to have 80 HP. So as long as I find my Beast Energy, which at some point hopefully we just like thin out our whole deck. Which isn't too hard for this deck to accomplish. It's pretty easy for us to like thin out our whole deck eventually. Um... And then we'll be uh, good to go. There's the Lost March. We're going to get our U-turn board back. I'm going to go ahead and send up the Naganadel. Hopefully, we draw into a Quagsire and a way to get a Mew this turn. U-turn board active. Cynthia, we need access to Mew and Quagsire. Found neither of those. And actually, all of a sudden, we are actually dead drawing. So, um... You guys got 180 HP. They're swinging for 140. Uh, so not quite knocking him out. I could get the Mew. Um, we could Mew. But actually just using him on the next turn seems fine enough. Um, so I think I am just going to go ahead and go treasure away the Wishy Washy. Grab myself a, another Naganadel. And then we're going to plan for the Beast Game Knockout. We have the Beast Energy in hand. I'm going to go ahead and throw the Beast Energy here. I'm going to go ahead and bench this guy. We're going to retreat into this one. We're going to charging up water and another water. Up over here. Then we'll attack with Baby Blitzephalon next turn. We'll knock out Emolga <clears throat> and their Mew or something along those lines. Yeah, we'll knock out their Emolga and their Mew. And then uh, we will finally, hopefully, get some of the other prize cards, get into a Quagsire that has been the bane of this game we have, we have yet to hit a communication we have yet to hit a quagsire they're both in the deck we just need to find them uh but once we find them we'll be in a good spot we can use them to actually uh start taking some knockouts uh on the on the following turn hopefully they they actually get the. i'm fine if they if they don't get the knockout here that's great if they do get the knockout our game plan is to respond with uh fireworks bomb and knock out emolga and mew we don't get the knockout or if they don't get the knockout this next turn then we just get another turn to kind of do whatever we want with there's a mountain pass so we know our top deck is not a draw supporter so that's not great but it could be a pokey gear it could be an acro bike we have a lot of those left as well three acro bikes three pokey gears so that's six cards left and then we have uh four draw supporters so 10 cards between the 28 cards left between our prize cards and deck is a uh, quite a lot so good chance to get a top deck and we'll hopefully and then 
when we draw two prizes on the fireworks bomb hopefully as well one of those is a way for us to uh see more cards that's all we're looking to do is find a way to see more cards um over these next two turns there's the lost march yep just enough oh a little bit over actually with the 200 damage because of the uh the bird whatever his name is i forget his name right now but yeah you guys know what it is somebody yep it was an acrobike acrobike grab a pokey gear this should hopefully find us a what's it called draw supporter yep there we go there's a lily I'm going to attach here a vault and a ganadel lily for five looking for a quagsire don't need it this turn we did find it this turn though so that's even better Evolve to the quagsire we're going to retreat to this does draw take three more projects yeah so we're gonna retreat to this guy and I'm going to fireworks bomb um, and I'm going to knock out the you or can knock out the Jirachi and their uh, what's it called actually the Natsu I could knock out the Jirachi and the Natsu four, five, seven, one, two, three, four. Um, got one left I don't know throw it on the Mew sure why not <clears throat> I don't think it actually really matters Take the two knockouts is all that matters. Plan for the beast game on the next turn. We are still one energy short. There is a Cynthia to help find us an energy. Calm to move something along out of the hand. Um, so looking good, looking good. We can calm. Uh, I don't think we'll ever use the Lana's fishing rod. Did lose both of our wishy washes, but I don't think that matters. Or we could we could actually Lana's fishing rod for one of them back, and then calm uh, for it to put it in play in case we need to send that up. We can bench the Buzz Mosa. Set up this guy with the U-turn board. Play the Cynthia. And then look for that last energy, because we have six in play right here. We'll get this one back with a charging up, so that's seven. But we need an eighth energy. We have, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, three water energy left in the deck. We have three water energy left in the deck that we can find to set up for this play. And then we should be all good, and it should be an easy dub from here. If we'd be able to do, like, anything early on if we had found a Quagsire... We definitely could have gone down the route of using Espeon Deoxys instead here to close out the game, but uh, this is fine as well. Really not that big. I don't mind having to do it this way. This, doing it this way is also just fine. So here we go. Ganadel, not going to be very good, so we're going to go um, bench the Buzzmosa. I'm going to go uh, calm away. I don't know, the Mew. Let's just check the deck. Yep, there's three water, no Acrobike left. Um, we could just take the Espeon Deoxys and default to Espeon Deoxys. And then we could go knockout, knockout, knockout. Um, doesn't win us the game, but uh, put us in a better spot than if we don't get the Beast game. If we get the Beast game, the game is just over. So the Beast game is ideal. But if we whiff the Beast game, then going for the what's it called is fine as well. But there is the Beast game play. So now we can go charging up. Go attach. Three, six, eight. Go retreat to the Buzzmosa. We can wash out everything to the active Buzzmosa and then use the Beast game, which normally just does 50 damage. But if we have seven extra energy cards, uh, we draw an additional three prize cards. It normally does 50 damage, you can draw an extra prize card if you take a knockout. But if you have seven extra energy cards, you draw three extra prize cards. And because of the Beast energy, we actually hit for 80, which is more than enough to KO the Jump Bluff. So we're actually going to draw four prize cards on this knockout, on this Jump Bluff. And yeah, we're gonna win this first game over our opponent's Lost March deck. So it looks like the whole Naganadel squad decided to show up for this game. Um, I'm not even gonna treasure here, I'm just gonna Lily for four. Um, I'll go ahead and treasure away. Um, we are up against an Ultra Necrozma, we have no idea what else their deck possibly could have in it. I'm gonna go ahead and treasure away a Psychic here, grab ourselves a. Just grab the. Another Naganadel, I think. I'm going to go ahead and have that in the hand. I just want the water in the discard pile more than anything. And then I'm going to go ahead and pass over to our opponent. We might use this next treasure to go and so go ahead and get ourselves a Baby Blacephalon, or we could just leave it in hand, or we could go get a, um, a Mew, depending on if we want to protect our bench from whatever our opponent has going on. We'll have to wait and see what our opponent's actually playing before we decide any of that. There's a Communication. Alternate across my plus communication plus a Malamar probably means our opponent is playing Malamar. So we're going to go ahead and assume our opponent's playing Malamar. They do have a GX on board, which is super good for us to try and abuse. We'll probably treasure for the Baby Blacephalon because this would be... Um, oh, actually, no. I thought For some reason, I thought I had another treasure in my discard pile. I will not even be that big of a deal. 
We'll probably just go ahead and get the baby of Cephalon in play, ready to go though. It is one of the main attackers we want to utilize in this matchup. There's an Inke from our opponent. We also want to use Mew. We could just look for the Mew attack on the first turn um, as well. I wouldn't hate doing that. That would be fine as well. Using Mew early on is super good in this matchup. He's one of the main guys we want to go with. There's a Distortion Door already from our opponent. We do want to be careful about how we draw our prize cards in this matchup. That's for sure. Spell Tag. And is that the Lily for 8? No, Cynthia for 6. Not quite. Not quite as good as you want it to be, but still not bad. Clearing out the whole hand. Spell Tag on the scene already. The Attached to the Active is never ideal, of course. But then Cynthia for 6. Can't really complain too much. Our opponent's got a pretty good start themselves. And we got the Triple Naganadel turn 2. I'm not complaining either. And there's the retreat to the Giratina and pass. So we're definitely going to abuse the fact that they did that. And we're going to go get Mew here. Discarding the Poke Gear. We might still utilize that. I'm looking at probably utilizing... Um, what's it called? Buzzwool, though, to be our main attacker this time. Um, we'll see, though. Things could change. And here we go. Cynthia, shuffle our hand into our deck. We're going to get ourselves six new cards. Found the energy... Found a Wooper as well through the Calm Away. Uh, what's it called? Treat you. And having Triple Negan it all up to turn two is so nice. We never are going to end up with any of our water energy in our discard pile. Calm Away the Wooper. Or the Poiple. Get a Wooper. We could grab the Ditto as well. This is the time when we'd want to grab Ditto. They could possibly knock it out with Baby Blacephalon on the following turn. Um, I think we're just going to go and grab the Ditto and risk it though. Um, yeah, this is the time where we want the Ditto. I don't think they're going to have it. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and side power here. Probably just go ahead and put three on the Ultra Necrozma. I think we're going to have to knock that out at some point. Or that is going to be part of our game plan is to knock that out at some point. So, go ahead and put three there. Then we can go ahead and uh, continuously put three there with the side power for right now. And just kind of stack it up. And then, ooh, a Viridian Forest. That's super nice to see. Allow us to find our water energy, which is something we can't do very easily sometimes. I mean, we go through our deck pretty fast. We got the Acrobikes. Um, we're pretty aggressive about playing a supporter every turn, hopefully. We do play uh, only the Force Cynthia and Ford Lily, but we do play Fort Pokey Gear. So finding them is usually not that big of a deal. We can usually play a supporter pretty much every turn. Um, yeah, pretty much every turn. Pretty much every turn. That's all I want to say. There's the Fighting Energy. So we know they're playing... Tina Chomp uh, and Ultra Necrozma. So they're playing a couple, a couple, a couple, a couple of a couple things here. Tina Chomp and Ultra Necrozma. I think my game plan is going to be to Great Catcher knock out the Ultra Necrozma with the, what's it called? The Buzzmosa at some point. I think that's what I want to go for is Buzzmosa knock out the Ultra Necrozma for four prize cards. So we need to use our Baby Blacephalon to draw uh, one prize card plus set up the Ultra Necrozma as long as we have enough energy in the deck. That is something else we have to check. Make sure we have the beast energy. Well, we don't need the beast energy, but it just makes things easier. Beast energy, um, the Buzzmosa, the Great Catcher. All those. We need all those in the deck to be able to pull off this game plan. And our opponent's going to be stuck for a little while because they did retreat to the Garatina and then pass. We're going to be able to abuse this Mew with Psy Power for a little while here. Um, while our opponent probably, I mean, they could hit their one of their switch cards. Um, but they might just be manually attaching to the active over three turns. But if they do have a switch card on the next turn, they'll actually be able to attack with Giratina. So it could be as soon as next turn that they actually attack with Giratina. And then, uh, we don't really have a ton of spread guys, but we can kind of send up wishy washies for a couple turns while we build up into our game plan and just kind of stall, mess around with them for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and throw down Whooper, Walt to Quag, play the Pokey Year, grab the Lily. Wasn't too worried about finding a supporter there. And then we'll go ahead and Lily for five. I know the Buzzmos is in here. I should have checked for the other guys as well. Didn't. Uh, we definitely want to use the Viridian Forest. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and Viridian. Actually, I don't know what I want to Viridian Forest away here. This one's kind of tough. I guess the Wooper probably. Could. We could also get rid of the Jet Geyser uh, Volcano. But we might actually want to attack with them so we can spread 20s on our opponent's bench. So I think the Wooper goes here. Go ahead and get ourselves a Water Energy. Baby Cephalon's in here. The Beast Energy is in here. We prized one, two, three. Oh my gosh, we actually prized. Uh... Oh no, they're up here. One, two, three, four, five. We prized three. I thought we prized all of them. I looked at the water energy, the energy section. I was like, oh my goodness. Um, 
with three, four, five. So we probably four energy total, a rainbow, and some water. So we can't actually go about that game plan. Our game plan now has to be SP on Deoxys at some point to clean up a bunch of stuff, which is fine. We can work with that. Um, we have the Wishy Washies in deck, and we can probably attack with the Volcanion as well. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a water here. And I'm going to treasure it away. Then out the deck a little bit more because we currently don't have a draw supporter. Grab the baby Blacephalon. Hopefully find one of these energies on that turn three. And be good to go from there with that. Get this guy into the hand. He's going to charging up the energy instead. That's fine. And then we're going to side power again. I think just put three more on. We go one, one, one. Uh, let's just put the three on the on the Ultra Necrozma though. Yeah, I like the three on the Ultra Necrozma, I think. And then we're going to attack with the Vi Vi Prism Star Volcanion on our next turn. Spread some damage on their bench. Um, as long as they don't get the Mew in play. If the Mew comes into play, we won't be able to do that. Um, if they had hit their own Giratina, we will get the knockout there, which I actually don't want to do. I don't actually want to knock out their Giratina, so I'm kind of hoping that they Shadow Impact. When they Shadow Impact, they actually hit one of their bench Malamars instead. Um, if they actually even Shadow Impact this next turn, they might not because they might whiff the switch. If they do get the switch, they will get the Shadow Impact off. I believe they have two Psychics in here. Well, now there's going to be two Psychics in there, so they can Shadow Impact. Um, if they have the switch, uh, if they don't have the switch, it's going to be attach, active, and pass again while they eventually get there. We do have to be careful of our opponent's uh, GX attack themselves with the Sky Scorching Light. Um, so if they get enough damage in play from uh, spell tags and such, we actually will just kind of lose to a Sky Scorching Light at some point. From Distortion Doors and like spell tag going into a Sky Scorching Light, we would actually just probably lose. So we got to be careful of that. Uh, we should be able to deal with it just fine. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but we do have to be careful. Actually, knocking it out would be pretty good. And then our opponent wouldn't be able to do that. I don't think Buzzmosa is our game plan this game, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of him. We do have the Lana's Fishing Rod if we do need to get him back, but I don't think he is our man in this game. So we're going to go ahead and just get rid of him <clears throat> for right now. I think I only have one water left in the deck. Acrobite definitely want the Cynthia, but I would like to get that last water out before anything else happens. Um, so I think we just go ahead and Psy Power again. Once again, I think we just hit up this Ultra Necrozma for all three. Sure, hit him up for all three. We plan to knock him out. Like I said, we want to attack with the Volcanium Prism Star. I don't want to knock out the Garatina, so I'm hoping that when they did, when they finally Shadow Impact this turn, after being stuck for the last few, but they did it to themselves by sending out the Garatina um, to try and deter me from knocking it out. Well, I just went to the Psy Power. That was fine with me. We could also Lana's Fishing Rod to get the Mew back and then actually plan to just attack with Mew again and then go into the Baby Blacephalon <clears throat> and then uh, go into the Espeon Deoxys. We do need to find the Beast Energy for the Baby Blacephalon though because we need the Psychic for the Espeon Deoxys. So we'll just go ahead and see where they hit here with the Shadow Impact. If they don't hit their active, we're definitely attacking with the Volcano, hitting this for 100 and then spreading 20s. And then we'll go into Mew on the next turn. And then we'll go back into the Babel Cephalon. And then we'll go into the Espeon Deoxys at some point. We don't have to go into the Espeon Deoxys immediately. Um, we'd have time to do it if we wanted to. Um, just at some point, we'd want to go into Espeon Deoxys. Um, or we could do the Beast gameplay um, if we do get uh, prize cards here coming up. But we'll see what they hit with Shadow Impact. It is their active. I think I still want to attack with the Volcano Prism Star. That's a lot of spread damage we're going to get off if we do attack with they do get to spell tag but i don't think it's that big of a deal that they get to spell tag um i'm gonna go ahead and actually get rid of this acrobat because i want to keep everything else but i want to get that water out of the deck right now and i also want to yeah like i said bench him and attach to him we're gonna go, we're gonna try and execute this game plan here we're gonna go like this don't nope. get the mew back i'm gonna throw out this ultra space so i can find him back into my hand after i use this cynthia we are looking for the beast energy there. We found the beast and the rainbow. That is fantastic. Going to use this. We already have him in hand, so we're going to get ourselves the Poiple. Uh, I'm going to... Ooh, we have the U-turn board now. Let's utilize that. Treat into this guy. Charging up for one. And then hit them with the wash out. One, two to the active. Um, that's it. And then we're going to Sauna Blast, get the knockout. More importantly, spread that damage onto our opponent's benched Pokemon. The knockout's okay. 
Uh, spreading that damage onto the bench is the priority here, though. Um, there it is. Knock him out. 120-20. 110. They have to figure out where they're going to put the spell tag damage. Yeah. So they dumped a lot on their active, which means we know they're attacking with Giratina again this next turn to actually knock out our uh, Volcano Prism Star. We got another rainbow out of the uh, prize cards. That's super good to see. Gonna use the beast energy on the baby Blacephalon because we're not gonna have... Well, I guess we could save it for a turning point, but I think we want the rainbows just in the deck just in case our opponent does play something like a reset stamp or something cheesy like that. Um, we may as well just go ahead and make sure we can... Uh, or increase our chances of finding the rainbow for the Espeon Deoxys, which we have plenty of time to find. We actually don't have it yet. We don't have the Espeon Deoxys yet, but we have plenty of time to find it. Um, so we're going to go into Baby Blacephalon next turn. We're just going to spread a bunch of damage into play. Um, oh, no, we can't Baby Blacephalon next turn. Actually, if we don't find the Mew, we can just spit poison the Giratina and get some extra damage in play that way. They aren't down any switches, so they'll probably be able to switch heal the poison, but... Um, we could also just set up the Wishy Washy for a turn as well and make them Shadow Impact it twice. Actually, I think that's what I would want to do is just set up Wishy Washy for a turn while we look for the Mew. Ooh, that's pretty cool, actually. I think we would just set up Wishy Washy for a turn. Uh, we don't plan because every time they Shadow Impact, they also put 40 damage into play. So that's more damage for us to uh, work with. So I think we just send up Wishy Washy, put Spit Poison. If we find Mew, we could Mew, but Wishy Washy actually is like theoretically more damage into play. Uh, if we put that into play, actually. Well, I guess, you know, there's the metal energy on their Giratina. So it looks like they don't plan on using Alternate Cosmo at all, or they play another one. Oh, there's a Judge. So that takes away all of our potential game plans, and we're back to, uh, where one. Got the Beast Energy, got a Cynthia. All right, we can work with both those. Definitely want to put the Beast Energy in play right now. I guess we could be, we maybe want to be kind of scared of Faba, but we have two Rainbows in the deck as well to work with, so I'm not that worried about it. Um, great catcher, I might go ahead and just get rid of off the Viridian Force because I don't think we want great catcher anymore, but I could be wrong. We might still want to try and utilize that. Potentially, we have to, I think we're pretty locked in on the spread strategy, so I think I'm going to go ahead and Viridian Force away the great catcher, get out of the deck, attach the beast energy to one of the bench and again Adels, and then we want a Cynthia, and we ideally want to see a Wishy Washy or the Mew. I think ideally a Wishy Washy is a little bit better, actually, so I think I'm going to look for the Wishy Washy here. Here's the Shadow Impact to knock out our Volcano. Prism. Goodbye, Volcanion Prism. You did your job well, though. Appreciate it. And they went ahead and hit themselves for 40. That's fine. Go ahead and send up the Ganadel. Draw for turn is a Poipole. Um, so like I said, I think... Just get rid of that. Um, grab nothing. Match the Beast Energy. And play the Cynthia. Like I said, we're looking for... Mew or a Wishy Washy. I think Wishy Washy is slightly more effective because they'll Shadow Impact again and then they'll take that much more damage into play. So let's go ahead and charging up a bunch. And then if we really need to attack with the Wishy Washy, we can. We can move energy up to it and attack with it. But our opponent did board lock themselves right now. So I'm just going to retreat to Wishy Washy and pass. And we'll see what our opponent does about it, um, because it is kind of a uh, pretty big wall there for our opponent to deal with. They can't, when currently they could knock it out with Ultra Necrozma, but I don't think I'd really care if they went and spent, uh, they do need to find, they would have to get their second medal. If they play a second medal, um, we get to use our Baby Blacephalon on our next turn. We'll try and keep the Mew, we'll definitely keep the Mew actually around, because Mew allows us to, if we don't get the full kill on the following turn on everything with Espeon, uh, then we can like use Mew to put a little bit of extra damage in play. Maybe they Shadow Impact again, which will lead to more damage in play, and then Espeon Deoxys should be ready to go to knock everything out on the following turn, ideally. There's the switch into the Jirachi. Yeah, we're just trying to stall here with the Wishy Washy. We can utilize Mew later if we want to. Maybe we'll settle on in the next turn. Our deck is getting super low, so we should easily be able to find one of those rainbows plus the Espeon Deoxys at any point we really need to. Want to. We have only two draw supporters left, so I'm going to try and avoid playing those at all costs. Just kind of build up the hand, and we'll put them down at some point. And then we need to draw five prize cards. Um, so I'm looking at uh, this guy for sure. Eight HP left. And then Alamar. Uh, Jirachi and probably Malamar because this guy's got 90 HP left and these guys got 70, 70, and 50. 
So we're looking at these as our five prize cards here. This is our, our five prize cards here. Unless this Inke stays in play, and then I think we might just directly knock out the Inke with the Maybe we'll Cephalon go knock out, spread damage to these three, and then plan to clean up these three with the Espeon Deoxys on the following turn would be the game plan. But we'd want to immediately just knock out that Inke because uh, it only has 60 HP, which means it's less HP left than the Malamars, which means it's just more uh, it's just more efficient to knock out that. But it does open up a bench space for them, so maybe I wouldn't want to do that, actually. That could get scary. I guess I should just keep their bench trapped while I can, because what is it? Like 70, 140, 50, 190, plus 80. 270 and we're overall doing 320 in damage counters so yeah we can just keep their go ahead we can go ahead and just keep their uh their board trapped actually that's fine with me we can just keep their board locked up here so yeah maybe we'll step on next turn after they knock us out with the alternate crossbow we're just gonna put the, the damage on these four uh mostly on put these guys up all the way and then the rest on here so we can put like uh five or right, six six That'd be, that'd be all of our damage. We could do like, I don't know, four, four, you know, three, two. I don't know. I'll figure it out on my turn. I feel like we have this game locked up. We just need to kind of go through the motions. So that's kind of what we're waiting for here. All right, draw. It is just the baby Blacephalon, which is kind of funny. C. Treat. Out. Beast energy. And a water energy. Done. And going to fireworks bomb. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, four, four. So we're at ten. One, two. Sure. Spread them up to the Ultra Necrozma, the Jirachi, and the Malamars. And then Espeon Deoxys will go three, 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 six. And then that will be the game on the next turn. So this one is pretty much locked up. We can pretty much draw our whole deck as well. We can go. Uh, treasure away the Mew, communication away whatever we grab, um, <clears throat> or communication away the Mew, grab a Naganadel or the Poipol, treasure that it, treasure away that, grab the Espandioxus, bench that, play the Acrobike, Lily for six, and that'll be our whole deck on the next turn. We can also mess with our top deck. We have There's a Viridian Forest in play, so we can thin out that card if it's something we can't play down. So no matter what, we see our whole deck, our whole deck Next turn, we know Espeon Deoxys is in the deck, and we know we have two rainbows in the deck. So even if we only saw nine cards out of the ten card deck, we have two rainbows left, which means it's okay to give up one of them. They actually play, what, two basic metal, two basic fighting? Damn, they really like attacking with GXs, don't they? There's the hard retreat into the Tina, so they plan to use Tina this turn to take the knockout, but we already know it's not enough. We're just kind of waiting, going through the motions, waiting to... Closed out this game with the Espeon Deoxys. It was kind of cool. The first game, we got to use the Buzzmosa. This game, we get to use the Espeon Deoxys. I tried to make this Nagquag deck as much of like a checkmate Nagquag as I could. This is the closest I've been able to get so far. Um, and, well, it works out. Pretty much every game we win, we use one of our win conditions. Or, I mean, I guess if our opponent dead draws, we'll win because they dead drew. But uh, pretty much every game we win, we win with one of our ideal win conditions through the Espeon Deoxys or through the Buzzmosa. And we're going to do it here again in the second game in just a second. There we go. Knocking out our Blacephalon. 40 more to their Giratina. So this guy's only got 50 HP left. Uh, but I see these guys all have left. All, all have less. Go up. Again, Adele. Uh, we top decked that guy. So we can go calm away this guy because he's like more important than any other dude. Uh, we're going to grab then again, Adele, because he's like least important than any other dude. We're going to go treasure away this guy have ourselves the Espeoxys. We're going to Viridian Forest away this. Fail. Play the Acrobike. Grab the Rainbow. And that will do it. We do one charging up here to our Naganadel. Put down our Espeon Deoxys. Attach the Rainbow Energy. Retreat to the Espeon Deoxys. We'll wash out all five water energy to the active, and then we will cross division for the full effect to knock out the two Malamars, the Jirachi, and the Ultra Necrozma, and take this second dub here. There it is. Cross division. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
five, six, and then we can throw the rest here. Do we have enough? No, 10 short from taking a sixth prize card, but we got close. We could have used side power first if we wanted, I guess, but no need to prolong the game. Oh no, we did have enough. We had exactly enough to kill everything except that last Malamar. He can stay in his corner uh, healthy and fine. And yeah, that's gonna do it for this video on the Nagquag, Nagquag Checkmate deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give the video a like. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.